So there's two ways to solve this question, actually. Um, and I'll go through both of them in two different versions. One of them is to consider um, systems. And what I mean by systems is you have two masses and they're attached together and when they move they're going to move together and when they accelerate they're going to accelerate together. The first one is 20 kilograms and this one is 5 kilograms. You can see that when the first one let's see when the first one is accelerated down because of gravity it's going to cause the second one to accelerate as well. Um, we're going to assume that there's no, there's no friction in this problem because it doesn't talk about it. So when we um, sub solve something by systems, what we do is we take both of the masses and we combine them together and we say consider this to be like one big mass that's 25 kilograms in mass. So what are the forces acting on a 25 on this 25 kilogram mass? Well, the only force is the force of gravity but not the full force of gravity, only force of gravity on the 5 kilogram mass. There's nothing holding it back except the inertia of the 20 kilogram, and we don't talk about that. So the only thing weird about this is sometimes it makes you do, like, so I'm going to put my acceleration down. You can see that that makes sense for this, but obviously this moves sideways. I guess the point with the pulley is that it changes the direction, but other than that, it's no different than having a 20 kilogram being attached to a five kilogram, being pulled by an applied force. These two problems are very similar. This pulley simply puts a kink in this, but it doesn't change how both of them are going to accelerate together. So we can solve this because we can say, we can go back to this idea that F net equals MA. MA equals the sum of the forces. Okay, so now from this we can see that the mass times the acceleration, well, in this case, I guess we can even put in our mass. It's 25A equals the sum of the forces. Well, there's only one force. It's the force of gravity, so we can call it Fg on 5. So 25A equals 5 times 9.8. So A is simply going to be equal to 5, 49 divided by 25. So in this case, A equals 1.96 meters per second squared. That tells us what the acceleration of the system is. But it doesn't see when I, when I lump the two masses in one, I don't get any information about the tension in the rope because all that's internal. The tension doesn't factor in when I treat the whole thing like a system. When you talk about systems, you're only drawing the forces external to the system. And in this case, the tension is all tied up in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw two separate free body diagrams. And it doesn't really matter which one you use. You could take the free body diagram of the 20 kilogram or the 5. And we can just draw both of them for the purposes of illustrating this. So there's a 20 and there's a 5. So what are the forces acting on these? Well, the 20 only has this tension force, right? Ft. That's the thing that's causing it to accelerate. So the reason it accelerates is because it's attached to this 5 kilogram mass and the tension is pulling it. The 5 kilogram has two. It has force of gravity pulling it down and it has the tension pulling it up. So what I want you to really consider here is that these two tension forces are action reactions. This tension is essentially the force of 20 on 5 and this one is the force of 5 on 20. It's just being acted on through the rope. So one of the things we know about action-reaction forces is they're equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So what we're going to do, and this really helps us with our sign conventions, is take the direction that the object is accelerating to be the positive direction. So this thing is going to accelerate down. I'm going to call down positive. This thing is going to accelerate to the right. I'm going to call a right positive. And can you see that when I set up my sign convention like that, this tension is negative because it's pointing up and up is negative, and this tension is positive. So they are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Even though there's two dimensions here, they're still opposite in direction. Now we can choose. Choose one free body diagram. We don't have to do this twice. We choose 
one free body diagram to analyze. Let's do this one. It's easier. There's only one force on it. So I'm going to say F net equals MA. MA equals the sum of the forces. Well, in this case, MA is 20 times 1.96. And the sum of the forces is just tension, which is what we happen to be looking for. So 20 times 1.96, that's 39.2. So we find that FT equals 39.2 newtons. And that's our answer. So in breaking it down into the, by looking at the two individually, we can find out the tension force. So just to recap, we put it all together, made a 25 kilogram mass, and only considered the force, forces external to that 25. Really the only one was FG, and that led us to simply conclude our, our acceleration is 1.96. Then we had to break it down into the two individuals. We picked the one we liked better, happened to be this one, and we found the tension force. We could have picked this one, and we would have just had to do the, you know, FG minus FT, and we would have gotten the same answer doing it that way.